Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Craig and this is the Grow Paradise Garden. And as promised, here is your first update video of 2024 about the expansion of the Grow Paradise nursery that's gonna help us grow more and more tropical style plants for all of you that we can ship all over the UK and some changes in the Grow Paradise Garden, which is our showcase garden, where we push the boundaries of what we can grow in the UK and experiment for all of you, and we'll share some how-to videos. Now, I've been working hard over the past week or so, out in the cold, so I'm gonna show you some of the changes we've been making and just share with you the journey so far. So here I am, in the middle of the Grow Paradise Garden. This is where the central bed used to stand with our beautiful roost tree, that lovely orange canopy in autumn, it's gone. It was a necessary sacrifice. Down here, I had to dig out our euphorbia, um, lovely green, evergreen euphorbia. I've still got that, don't worry, and I am taking cuttings from it for the Grow Paradise shop. Um, and I've got a future project that I will be sharing with you that's gonna involve the creation of a tropical courtyard. I had to remove a massive Woodwardia fern that was really, really healthy and it actually remained evergreen through this mild winter. But again, that's in a pot and that's gone to the new tropical courtyard project. And I had to dig out all of the beautiful soil that we'd spent years building up in this area. But it's okay, I've kept the soil, we're gonna build raised beds and we're gonna use that in this project, this tropical courtyard that I keep mentioning. It will be coming up, don't worry. As I dug down, I realized that when we started this garden, I'd taken a few shortcuts and I paid for it. There were slabs underneath the soil. I can't believe how well the plants did, considering they were kind of planted on top of slabs. I had to get as many of those up as I could. There was concrete underneath and then level out this area. Now the plan is we're gonna have more benches for growing more plants. We're gonna get a couple more of these. So we've got the heated greenhouse, um, which is where we sold almost 6,000 plants last year out of this domestic sized six foot by eight foot greenhouse, which is mad. We're going to get another one of these along here and another one along here, which means that we're gonna have two tiers for growing loads more of these weird and wonderful plants. I've got the two beds either side. I've got the bed, the jungle border, we called it last year. We're keeping this because I love growing plants and I didn't wanna do away with all of the beds. I'm not ready for that yet. But they've got an added bonus. Having the extra height means that they're gonna buffer any wind coming. Because don't forget, I'm quite coastal and we get a lot of salty winds. So any extra height that I can get from jungle foliage is gonna help to protect all of the nursery stock from the surrounding environment. And it's gonna help to create that subtropical microclimate that we've spent years building in this garden. Now, don't worry, the majority of the plants in this jungle border have survived. There's a narrow border that was attached to it where I have had to dig some plants out. This plant wrapped in fleece is my Musa sycamensis, which I grew from seed and I really didn't want to move at this time of the year. It's not ideal. As I say, the temperatures were just below freezing. So I'm hoping it survives. It is wrapped up. I've put loads of soil around the roots to keep them nice and insulated. So fingers crossed that survives. But down here, my Mushia wollastonii, which I've done several videos about, um, is surviving. I managed not to disturb the roots too much and it's still under fleece because it's still quite cold at this time of the year. Obviously my loquat tree is thriving and this is going to be a star in the backdrop of the nursery. I absolutely love it, especially at this time of year for its enormous corrugated leaves because it just keeps the garden looking tropical when so many other things like the bananas aren't looking in their best shape. I mean this banana is clearly not in the prime right now, but it's in its winter form and it's absolutely fine. I haven't wrapped my Musa Basdu bananas in any fleece for a couple of years now. This one is maybe eight foot tall and the stem is still nice and thick. And we have had sub-zero temperatures here. We've dropped down to about minus two degrees Celsius with a light frost um, and they've been absolutely fine. My Brassiopsis mitis was very close to having its roots chopped when we put the retaining board in but I've managed to keep that where it is because I don't want to disturb it at this time of year. I have kept it wrapped in fleece to protect the stem. And I'm pleased to say that my Pseudopanax laetus, this beautiful evergreen from New Zealand with the palmate leaves, it's actually a relative of Scheffler plants, is doing really well this year. It hasn't been frosted back anywhere near as bad as it was last year, but we're still in the midst of winter, so there's time 
for me to get caught out, but so far so good and it's too big for me to protect. It did recover really well from the stems, even though the leaves fell off last winter, so we'll see how it does. And right at the back, my papaya tree is still outside because it's too tall to go into the greenhouse. Uh, it did lose all of its leaves, so I did need to wrap it up. I cut off all of the damaged leaves. I also cut off any fruits that were there and I'm keeping them indoors to try and ripen them and then hopefully they'll be full of seeds that I can sow in spring. But it is staying outside. Um, I'm not gonna inspect it until spring. I'm gonna leave it wrapped up nice and warm and we'll see when the weather's right in spring, whether it survives and whether it reshoots. I've also got some covered stands from Ikea. These are fantastic. They act as almost vertical polytunnels. These are three that I've had for the past three or four years and they've stood up to the elements super, super well. So I've got more of these that I'm gonna be adding to an area over here, which is a bit messy at the moment, so I won't show you too much. That'll be for a future update. That means that I'm gonna be able to grow more half-hardy plants through the winter period to keep the nursery stocked up. And I'm gonna be able to do a lot more propagation of homegrown plants, which is how it all started for us. Um, so to be able to do more of that is gonna be fantastic. Now, once this ground was leveled, I had to remove these stones that were on the old footpath that swept through here. I have a very, very intelligent wife who uses her common sense a lot more than me and she saw me struggling with moving the soil from this bed. I loaded it all up into a half ton bag here and then dragged it across the garden. And she saw what I was doing to my back. So she came out and suggested, why don't you just move them bucket by bucket to a bag that's over on our patio, which is what I did and it was much better. I hate it when she's right. Once they were up, I lifted the old weed membrane, continued to level the ground out and we could start to see the base for what was gonna be kind of the floor of the new nursery. With that all done, I recycled some of the decking planks. We had a bit of decking here. That was kind of a legacy feature from when we had the shed um, and the stream coming up here with the hammock hanging over the top. The decking had to go, but we've recycled as much of the wood as possible to retain this raised bed here and to keep any gravel back away from the greenhouse. Now I did want an ornamental edging. So I spent a bit of money to install this Corton steel edging on the footpath side of this raised area. Now, Corton steel is a texture and a garden feature that I absolutely love. I've got that Corton steel water bowl that was in the jungle board over there. And I, I just love the look of rust with lush green leaves. Was it worth the effort? Mm, debatable. It took a long time to get these uh, hammered in because the, the pegs on the bottom of the steel sheet, they go in about 10 centimetres. And as I say, there's a lot of concrete under these slabs. There were concrete slabs here. In these relatively new build gardens, there is so much hidden concrete. And if you've got concrete or stones and you're trying to get these pegs down in nice and easy, it's almost mission impossible. It took so much longer than installing that wooden plank. And with wood, everyone's got a saw. You can cut it to size, it's easy. It's not that easy with steel. So I'm, I'm not sure whether I'd use these again, but we'll see how they age, how well they stand up to the test of time compared to the wood. But hopefully it will be worth it as the years come on and they rust into a beautiful patina. And this afternoon, we've got a shipment of one ton of Cotswold chippings because these slightly mucky ones down here are the pebbles that I moved from the old stream. So we've moved them back, I've hosed them down as much as possible. But with the fresh Cotswolds chippings coming, we're gonna fill this up nice and high so I can keep using the nursery, no matter how wet it gets when it rains. And don't forget, the Grow Paradise Garden is based on heavy, heavy clay soil. And I was reminded of that when we lifted up the deck. The contrast between the beautiful, dark, rich compost that we've built up here compared to the untouched clay soil down there was ridiculous. It, it was so gray and compacted, it looked like concrete. So once the lorry arrives with the rest of the Cotswolds chippings, I'm gonna spend my afternoon shoveling one ton of gravel into this bed, and I will upload another update video when the next phase of the new Grow Paradise nursery is well underway. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this update video. We are really making the most of what limited space we've got available to help as many of you grow tropical style gardens, grow the plants that you love as possible. I mean, it blows my mind how much we managed to achieve last year in this space, how many people we managed to help. And I just hope that we can do more and more of that this year. So as I say, comment below if you liked this video and let me know if there's any gardens that you'd like us to go and film or any people that you'd like us to go and interview who are passionate about plants or who have a plant collection that perhaps you'd like to see. I'd love to go and meet more growers and share the interactions and the conversations with all of you. Hit subscribe if you're enjoying the content that's coming out on this channel. Feel free to go and check out our plant and seed shop. Um, we ship all over the UK and sign up to our free gardeners social network and forum at growparadise.social where there is a global community of people who love growing the same plants as you. Thank you, I'll see you in the next one.